Hi, I'm Shani Yan from Taiwan. Today I'd like to present you 4-H practice programming in Taiwan 4-H. And my background is agricultural extension and I have worked in 4-H sector longer than 45 years. And after I joined the Global 4-H leaders team and I learned 4-H is a positive youth development organization and we hope that 4-H members can learn the six C's from um, 4-H. And six C's included competence, confidence, character, connection, caring, and contribution. And in Taiwan, we have adults, we have extension workers, staff, volunteers to help our 4-H members. And our 4-H members aged from 9 to 24. Therefore, it will include the children, teenagers, and also young people. And some of our local clubs, they have their, um, they elected their own president. Therefore, they have their own staffs and also they created their own learning plan. And since the philosophy of forage is learning by doing, therefore our forage project focused on hand on, and also they will have a project meeting, and we provide materials, forage materials for forage club. And also, our forage members, they will have their own records, yeah. And after the project, we hope that they can have an exhibition of the forage project outcome. And in activities, we have camps and others uh, like field trip and, and also our forage members, they will provide their service to local, national and international forage activities. And we also um, hope that we can provide opportunities for our forage members to cultivate their leadership and also they can learn from their service. And in today's content, I will include six examples of our forage project. And our pro forage project, uh, we always focus on their local features and also, and we hope they can know their community better. And uh, so we, have, uh, we will hope they can have community connection. And also we will see what kind of the trend issues at this moment. It's like uh, agri-food education, SDGs, and also STEAM, and also environmental issues. And, uh, and we hope that we can um, match our um, agricultural policy. Uh, it's called agri-vital functions. It uh, includes production, life, and ecology. And in our forage activities, we have camps, field study, public service, and also national events and exchange programs. And for exchange programs, it includes domestic and international. And in domestic exchange program, is the country to country exchange program. And in international activities, it includes EFI and also S4H. And we have exchange program with Korea, we call KT. And also we encourage our 4-H members involved with Global 4-H and Asia 4-H Network events. And, and the, the third part of my presentation will um, and let you know that how our 4-H members learn from 4-H. And then the last slide will be shows that our resources in Taiwan 4-H. And this is the six examples of uh, the 4-H project today. And the two from uh, Northern Taiwan, and the two from the Central Taiwan, and the two from Southern Taiwan. And uh, let's see what we have. And the first one is the Shiitake Mushroom Cultivation Project. And this project is conducted by Qinse. Qinse is located in Taichung City, it's in Central Taiwan. And the project process includes their idea generation because of a mushroom um, cultural spawned attenuation is due to climate change, therefore it affects the, the products of a, a mushroom industry. And also, and we can see that this project, the Farmers Association, they initiated this project and cooperated with the high school and also primary school and the district office. 
and we have young farmers and farmers and the teachers and officers to help us in this project. And during the, the project process, uh, process, and we focus three parts uh, of the project: is environment, decrease technology, and because of uh, the most mushroom um, house is located in mountain area, and we have a very strict uh, load to um, regulate their um, building. And also, we use, and they use film, documentary, and uh, literature discussion, and also interview and field study to, uh, to go on the, um, to run the project. And we can see their outcomes, and they have a study of a uh, feasibility of putting solar panel on the roof of mushroom growing house. And also they uh, they like to comply and to go uh, to go with uh, um, the law regulations and uh, to see that how can they build a legal mushroom house. And also um, they analyze uh, the expenditure and the output value of Shiitake mushroom growing. And they designed an AI, the artificial intelligence mushroom growing house, and which complies with government decrees, including remote monitors and automatic watering switching windows. And also they connecting SDG, the concept of SDGs in the project. And our forage members their potential can be um, uh, energized uh, in this uh, project. And also we can see their crea uh, crea crea creativity and uh, also they learn the agricultural technology in the process, in the project. And the after effect of this project is the more AI course in the curriculum of vocational high school. And we can see some pictures of this project. And they have a field visit to farmer's farm. And then we can see the left picture is their forage classroom. And this is they use AI to build um, a mushroom house. And this is uh, the process. And they use solar panel on mushroom roof. And the, the second project is a wonderful encounter with terror in my hometown. And this project is held in southern Taiwan and Jiu Ru. Township is located in Pindong County. And we can see the objective of this project is practical using local crops and the resources because terror is the domestic um, um, products of uh, uh, and also connecting with land, agriculture, and food in order to implement agri-food education. Because agri-food education is now the focus of our agricultural policy. And also, and the, they applied the, S, the concept of SDGs in the project process. Therefore, they can know better about SDGs. And also, they learned to care global issues and to act to change life. So they use classroom knowledge and also experiential learning. So they visit the community and also they have field work in growing taro and also they cooking, they cook taro. They make different dishes. And also they make a board again to know how taro grow. And they, pub they publish their picture book. And this is all pictured by, uh, all joined by uh, Forge members. And uh, they also um, encourage par parents to involved in the project. And uh, what members learned from this project? More concerns about the environment and understand the relationship and the importance amongst diet, health, environment, and agriculture. And also they know better about the humanities and the multiple industries of the community. And from creative terror dishes, they learned local products and appreciate food. And from the roadside banquet and chefs from different countries, 
and that they know how to respect the diverse culture. And that they also know SDGs can start from daily life. And so they learn the concentration, and critical thinking, creativity, promoting parent-children relationship, and also they explore multiple um, perspectives. And we can see some pictures. And uh, we can see that uh, there are, are a lot of resources in this project. And the funds come from um, Farmers Association, government, and also self-financing. And uh, the young farmers, and also the the members of home economics clubs and the teachers, parents, elders in the community and also exchange agents and the specialists, they all help with this project. And we can see the partners of this project is farmers association, schools, farms, agriculture research and the exchange stations. And these are the pictures that visit community, therefore they know better about their hometown, community and agricultural features and they're planting taro. And this is the most interesting part. They like to catch insects. And this is, uh, they make the taro themselves. So we call it the homemade taro cuisine. And the parents and the child learn together. And also we can see the, the chef from uh, different countries. And they, they use solar pot to roast the taro. And they designed and made a board game to know how taro grow. And also they create their own picture book. And we can see that how they applied the concept of SDGs in the project and the practice in daily life. And the next project is growing sweet potatoes for charity. And this uh, project is held by Shenkeng, and Shenkeng is located in northern Taiwan. And, and at the beginning of this project, because of a farmer, and uh, he provided his land for forage members. Therefore, they decide they decided to grow sweet potato. And after they grow sweet potatoes, and they market in the street and also online market and sell the sweet potato and uh, to make money. And those money goes to the charity center and also half of the money and they, uh, they put it into their forage fund. Yeah. So we can see that the objective of uh, this project is to recruit the members, volunteers, and to appoint staff to learn leadership. And also they extending projects outcome to charity event and fundraising for future projects and to plan the right species according to the environment for sustainable development and to encourage parents' participation. So they're teaching basic knowledge and the skill of growing sweet potato. And they have field work, so they plant it and harvest it. And they participate in all the process. And also they have a group thinking of selling sweet potatoes and as I said, online marketing and also they have a pedal along the street because uh, Shenkeng is a famous tourist spot. Yeah. And also they, uh, they learn the revenue and expenditure uh, ratios. So they uh, know some concept about the management. And also they make um, sweet potatoes cuisine. And the charity event helping forage members to learn the meaning of helping people and how to help people. And we can see some pictures. Yeah. And the people, and the, our children, they love this project. And the next project is a SDGs project. And for this project, the very simple objective, we like our forage members to know better about the SDGs. Yeah. And also, this is the first online 4-H project in Taiwan because of COVID-19. Um, so, 4-H, uh, the, the participant is um, 4-H members uh, over 15 years. And after the project, we hope they learn the civic uh, responsibility, critical thinking, empathy, sharing, and also self-responsibility. 
and the exchange agent, she has to send out all materials before the project. And we can see that some, pro, uh, some pictures of uh, the project. This is the online project. And this is their forage records, yeah, project records. And the next is out of Shenkan Railways context one line a month. And this is also um, conducted by Shenkan Forage Club. I love this program because um, and, uh, um, it's an interesting one because they can visit different places and uh, they can um, travel around Taiwan. Also, they have a hope to uh, go to Japan and Europe afterward. Yeah. So, the initial of uh, this project is no railroad in Schenken because Schenken is in mountain area and there is no railroad. Yeah. So the objectives of this project is uh, are to know living environment about the Schenken and uh, to expose to other countries and also to learn different culture through taking chain around Taiwan and to develop teamwork and the res responsible attitude and to explore the vocational interest and also to cultivate problem solving ability. So they have a few trip, they have few study and also they use electric audio visual um, instruction, documentary, photography and also they have a real world journey and one line a month. And also during their um, trip they have a rider and they ride the bicycle yeah, to travel. So participants experience these areas. They go to Miaoli Railroad Museum and also they go to Zhanghua Railway Roundhouse and also they visit uh, Volunteer Center and also they visit Taiwan Railway Service Department. And also they experience live railway and the main line, branch line, mountain line, coastline, forest railway of Taiwan and railways. And also they go through tunnels and to know about better about the tunnels. And also they experience um, airport MRT. And uh, we can see that this is the poster. And this is uh, the most interesting part yeah, for boys to members to experience. Yeah, this uh, those uh, pictures yeah, what they, had, they took. This is uh, the project records, yeah. And this is the outcome of the project. And so their plans for the future. They, after the domestic experience, domestic life, and they, they like to travel uh, around the world. And the last project is for HTR project. And this project was presented in the first summit by uh, Una Chen. And uh, this project is in Lu. Lu is in the central part of Taiwan and is in mountain area. And uh, the domestic main product is tea. And uh, this project is to, um, to teach a child to become a tea maker. So therefore, and we can see the Farmers Association and they initiated this project and to teach children and to become a team maker. And then all family members will get involved with uh, this uh, project. And then they will serve to visit. Yeah. So they learn the skills and they have different courses and also uh, we can see how they um, carry out this project. And the team making skills in local culture. So we can see that they have to learn from the uh, foundation skills. Forage volunteers and the senior forage members will help with this project and to teach children how to make tea. And the children grow up from this project and also service, provide their service to um, forage volunteers or uh, to adults and also to visitors. And uh, in this project, forage volunteers and the senior forage members, they also strengthen their uh, foundation Team maker, uh, team maker skills. Yeah, so we can see that uh, in project process they have a, a project recording, and uh, after they see, after they do, and uh, they can write 
in the project record, and also they had practical exercise many times. So this is learning by doing, yeah. And then we can see that um, how children learn from um, um, uh, instructors of foundation skills. And we can see the flower arrangement because it will be the decoration of, uh, on the ta tea table. And it is also practical exercise and we can see the children, um, they, they were tea makers and to serve tea. And it is also practical exercise outdoors, yeah. And also they have a workshop of little tea makers. We can see that junior members, they wait um, on the side. And the four age volunteers, they, they were judged. Uh, they were judges and the senior members help forage volunteers in this event. So this is a kind of partnership with uh, adults and the children. And the workshop, in this uh, workshop, and uh, the children, they have to pass the examination and to get the certificate, certificate of tea maker. Yeah. So also in the tea art camp, and uh, we can see that this is the um, main for uh, mainly for the elementary school uh, students, and the, this camp is lasted for one week. And also, uh, we hope to build uh, up um, children's confidence, yeah, and they will understand about tea culture. And we can see that they can pass the examination and get the certificate. And in this, if in this camp, they also learn how to market themselves. Yeah. And in, this is the Global Tea Export, which held by Nanto um, County Office. And in this event, and the Forge members, they have a fashion show. They have a fashion show, and this is their stage. And they know better about how to promote a tea uh, industry and the tea culture. And also, they know how to face to public, and they can know that from from tea makers club, and then they can know how tea grows and what kind of tea cultures, and also that what they can do to promote their um, their hometown's production. So we can see that what kind of key competence of children learned in in, in this project. They use information to achieve goal. Therefore, they learn how to collect data and how to make decisions. And they learn to deal with others well. Therefore, they learn how to interact you know, with humans. And also, they know how to attend in a society. And they also learn to set goals for themselves. So this is a kind of success pursuing. And also, they know uh, then how to appreciate uh, their own culture. So this is also six six. Yeah, I think this is a very good project to see that uh, how six six applied into forage project. And uh, after they become team makers, they help us in the second Asia Forage Network conference in 2016. And this is the pictures that we took uh, during the event. Yeah. And then the next part I would like to share you about that how Taiwan 4-H help 4-H growth in activities. And, and you can see that we have different kind of 4-H activities like camps, field study, public service, national events. And also we have exchange programs and global 4 and Asian 4 network as I said. And uh, for Taiwan 4-H in my office, and we have this kind, different kind of camp um, um, in each year. And the first one is cold staff training. And uh, um, the participants know, know the skills how to run a camp. And the petty encourage camp is their practice of uh, what they learned uh, from the cold staff training. And also collegiate forage camp. And uh, Today, I'd like to share with you about our 4-H leadership camp. It's also held in, in the week that, uh, um, of our Global 4-H Digital Summit. Uh, and this is the biggest, and the biggest one. And also, we had this 4-H leadership camp from 1998. 
And after this uh, camp, and we hope they can service the local, national, and international forage activities. And then for forage members, if they participate, they are participants, they are just participating in the camp. But after, after they become the staff and they can practice their skill, what they learned, how to run the camp. And after they become seniors, they can pass down their experience. And after their service, and they feedback to forage. Yeah. And this is the forage leadership camp. The budget is from the Ministry of Agriculture, as we call the Council of, the Council of Agriculture. Uh, in Taiwan, um, uh, of Taiwan governments, yeah, and also we collect the participants' fee. And the objectives of this leadership camp is to cultivate seed members for local township and collegiate forage clubs. And the participants can learn leadership skill and the teamwork from this camp. And the participants, uh, we hope that will be aged from 18 to 22. And the staff. We required them to have participated the 4-H leadership camp before. And uh, also they have to receive the co staff training before they become the staff. And, and we have, uh, for the camps, we have staff training for three to four days, maybe one time, so maybe two times, yeah. yeah, before the camp. And the camp is five days long. And I always say that this camp actually includes three camps. Yeah, the first one is staff training because they have to prepare for the camp. And the second is participants' leadership camp. But for staff, this is their practice. Yeah, their practice camp. Yeah. So we call I call the forage leadership camp include three camps. Yeah. And the activities in the forage leadership camp we have lectures, mind making uh, DSC, World Cafe, Open Space, Fish Bowl, GPS, Educational Games, Party, Presentation, Group Work. And then we can see some uh, pictures later, yeah. Huh? And then you can see those pictures on the left side, side is all the um, commander of um, um, former leadership camp, yeah. Huh? And uh, for the how we prepare the leadership camp. Uh, we always assign the camp uh, a convener in March, and uh, he or she will invite his or her um, um, team, yeah, call team, yeah, and all then in May, and we recruit, uh, we recruit camp staffs, and uh, we have um, preparatory meetings for several times, and then we have a uh, staff training, and then in July we have a camp. Yeah, but for this year, because of COVID-19, therefore we postponed our camp um, uh, in September. And also we have a final discussion and a final report. If we have an in-person activity, so this will uh, be the process. Uh, and this is a 26 forage leadership, uh, leadership camp. And the left one is our convention this year. And uh, the right, the right side the picture is uh, um, his team. And uh, this is uh, the task force groups of the camp staff. So we can see uh, we have administration, we have curriculum, we have activity, we have equipment, and then we have information, we have service, we have camp daily, and also we have team counselor. So they have different responsibilities for each staff. And this is the uh, the different design for um, yeah, for the leadership camp in different years. Yeah, this is all designs for the the twenty six forage leadership camp this year. This is all designed by forage members. And uh, how they adjust to COVID nineteen because we decided to change the in person activity to to online format on August 23rd. Therefore, you will know that how busy they are now. And this is how they adjust to COVID-19. Yeah. And I think the best value of our Forage Leadership Camp is experience sharing and support from seniors. Yeah, I really appreciate this. Yeah. And why our Forage Leadership was able to be successful? 
because of teamwork, because of we have stage for use, and they will plan and they practice time and time, and they have creativeness, and also they're fully prepared. And this is a wholeheartedly um, event, and therefore we are always moved and touched by them. And the the most precious is experience passed down. And so after they um, come the stop of uh, our uh, different camps, and they will feedback to to forage. So they will service in national and the local forage activity and also international. So you can see that how many different kind of activities we have in Taiwan. Yeah, this is the international forage activities. Yeah, and this is the second Asia Forage Network conference. Yeah. And uh, what they learn from forage? From project, they learn the skill for their future job and also how to deal with families and friends. Yeah, and then learn different competence. Also from activities, they also different character competence and feedback service. Yeah, so we can see that what they learn from the activities: planning, communication, problem solving, teamwork. Risk management, administration leadership, and and so on. And the last part, I like to show you that what kind of forage resources we have in Taiwan. We have government support, and because we have a unique extension system, and the government support the NGO to、um, implement the forage program. Therefore, farmers association, fishermen association are very important. Therefore. For the forage extension system, and also ROC Taiwan Forage support farmers and the fishermen, and also government to conduct the forage extension work. And also we have、uh, co cooperate with the schools, and we have support also from business sections, and also from others. We have donation, and also we collect participants、um, a fee. And this is what the. I like to present、uh, our Taiwanese experience with you. I would like to say, forage is a family, and the global forage is the objective that that we like to achieve. That, that to see forage in everywhere,、uh, in everywhere around the world. And thanks. And if you want to contact me, then you can write me. Thank you.